Hello, this is a Whipple's resection specimen and we are looking at the distal stomach here. So this is the antrum, the pylorus and the duodenum. And we have the head of pancreas. This here is the common bile duct running in the head of the pancreas just before it goes out through the ampulla into the duodenum. Sometimes a Whipple's resection specimens also have the gallbladder, but in this instance, the gallbladder is not seen in this specimen. Turning this around, and again, we have the serosal surface now that is the antrum, the pylorus, the duodenum, the pancreas, and we have a little bit of fat here at the greater curve of the stomach. This again is the common bile duct and this possibly is the pancreatic duct. So the pathology lies in the head of the pancreas and first let's take a look at what the normal pancreatic parenchyma should look like. Uh, this here is an example of what's left of the normal pancreatic parenchyma, it usually has a somewhat lobulated appearance, very similar to salivary gland. And what we see uh, instead is actually a very ill-defined pale tumor mass. That I can't really even delineate it very well. So this is um, an infiltrative tumor mass in the head of the pancreas, and this is an example of ductal adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. If this causes significant obstruction of the common bile duct, the patient may present with obstructive jaundice. Otherwise, this may actually present quite late with uh, just very general symptoms of loss of weight or loss of appetite. Sometimes there may also be a vague abdominal pain that may radiate to the back. The prognosis of ductal adenocarcinoma of the pancreas is usually poor, um, partly due to its late clinical presentation. So in summary, this is a Whipple's resection specimen, which comprises the distal stomach, the duodenum, and the head of the pancreas. And we see here an ill-defined tumor in the head of the pancreas, and this is a ductal adenocarcinoma.